Hello, everyone. Welcome back. It's Betting Weekly Game Bet Match. It's a tennis betting podcast. It's our podcast number two of the week. It's Tuesday. And uh, if you followed us on Sunday, you had quite a successful afternoon on the match bets today. A um, lot of injuries, a lot of players withdrawing, but one big winner, Dan Evans. And I'm delighted to say a man in form is joining me. It's Sean Calvert. Sean, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. What a lovely day it is. Today. Oh, this is what I've been waiting for that kind of response. To you. <laughs> After your sort of disappointment of December and Christmas. Oh, it was horrible. It was horrible. We, you know, we were going to get a GoFundMe, GoFundMe page for your uh, for your filling, but it's all... I'll still take it. If people want to give me money, that's absolutely fine. Uh, you know me, nah, I'll take it. No, no, no. We didn't get much. There wasn't really much, to be fair. I think Five it was eight, or $8, I thought. It wasn't, when I looked <laughs> last, it was $8. Um, how are you? You seem to be a bit happier today. The sun's out. Yeah. Sun's, sun's out. out. It's minus that's six. It takes. That's Reason. all it takes. doesn't matter. It's, if it's sunny... I'm happy. I've been to the dentist. My dentist has got this huge bay window. So when you're getting your your, your work done, it all the sun shines in. It's, you know, it's they've got a TV in the roof as well, so you can just sort of, you know, you can look at what's going on on the roof, watch a bit of David Attenborough or whatever. Um, yeah, that's fixed. That's the fourth time I've been to the dentist for this one, but now it's touch touch cheap wood. It's um, it's it's hopefully fixed. So that that went well, and uh, my new fridge has turned up as well. You know, when, when that fridge I ordered yeah. last week it turned up black. Yep. That's a whole other story, by the way. That you know, they made me take it back to the post office, right. as in pick it up. It's a big old box. They made me pick it up and take it to the post office to to send it back. How to far them. is the post office? Well, I drove there, but it's not the point. It was. Oh, it's a, it's, you're it's, carrying it down the road like three miles. Well, if I had, this is the point I made to him. If I if I didn't drive, how am I supposed to get that back to the to the post office? It's like twelve kilos, real bulky, you know, box. Anyway, I had the gloves on with them about that. But a new one has arrived today from a different company, and it is white. So there you go. There you go. It's Things all... are looking good. And yeah. you've obviously paid for the filling with the winnings from Dan Evans. It's like all good. Well, it was a crown. It was expensive. But um, I suppose Dan has contributed to it slightly, yeah. Ah, well, that's all good. What, what would you, what have been like your experience of the dentist if Dan Evans got beat? The match was on actually while I was while I was at the why dentist. Can you, why are you watching that? On, on they the... don't have they don't have Bet Rivers streams on the on the roof of my on my dentist ceiling. They don't what? they don't have any of that. Just stuff. get your phone, get onto the, the Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, and tell you I don't want that. I want that. I want that. You're paying top have, dollar. I suppose I could have done that, but I didn't think about. That's that. why I'm not allowed in my dentist. Some of the suggestions I had on the roof, they won't let me back. So I'm not. Allowed... Your dentist has a has a TV on the ceiling. Oh, hang on a minute. My missus is, runs a dentist, one of the most poshest dentists. She's got very, she's got showbiz clients. So I can't see these teeth. They're beautiful. She's, she runs a dentist. I can't really see them on the camera. No, no they're not very good, actually. To be fair. She, she runs a dentist. She's got 27 staff, seven surgeries. She's okay. I yeah. didn't know that, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. She's, uh, she's, she's there now, the dentist. Um, and I'll tell you what, I'll be able to get the Dan Evers match if I ask, because I know the management. It doesn't matter. It's done. He, he won in straight sets. It was a good prize. It was a value prize. It was it was a it was a good play, and and luckily luckily it won. So there we are. It was a good play, and he's now as installed as an eleven to one shot to win in Adelaide. He tempted. I wouldn't. I wouldn't put anybody off it. No, he's. You know, I said he's got a good record in Australia. He he likes playing there. He quite enjoys the the sort of challenge of the Australian crowd, sort of winding him up and stuff. He doesn't doesn't really bother him that much. I think he likes. He likes the show, doesn't he? he? Likes to be the a bit of a showman, and I think he likes the a, a good atmosphere um, at matches. So I think that's perhaps why Australia and and the conditions are quick as well. So all things considered, it it, it does suit him, and he's a live contender. Yeah. Talking of conditions, what did you make of it today? Um, is it as fast as you expected? It's quick, but again, the players are complaining about the balls. You know, Kokinakis again said it was hard to hit aces um, because the balls fluff up quickly. It's the same issue that people had last year. With these Wilson, uh, sorry, uh, Dunlop, sorry, AO uh, balls used to be Wilson, um, that they they fluff up after you know six or seven games or or even even sooner on some on some uh, circumstances, and that's one of the reasons that Kokinakis put forward as to, to why he lost to to Live, which was a, which was a really bad result. But he, he doesn't he looks out of sorts at the minute, Kokinakis. I was expecting him to come back actually to to Adelaide, his hometown, a tournament he's won before. I was expecting him to. It to kind of gym up, but he looks, he doesn't look right. I don't know what's up with him, but he's not, he's not the old cock and at the minute. Uh, let's have a look at the betting. The betting now uh, has changed quite significantly. And one person who's the biggest market mover is our pick, Alexander Chevchenko. He was 28 to 1 when we gave him on Sunday. That was a good price. That really now, was. He's now 8 to 1. He's now the fourth favorite. What a big move on that was. He, he wasn't really that impressive, was he, against it? He struggled a little bit, but he came through. It was a tough match. It was always going to be a tough match. Um, my my concern for Shevchenko now would be would be fitness because he was struggling a bit. He had 
he had his thigh. He was kind of massaging his own thighs at one stage. I don't know whether he just didn't, didn't want to bring the trainer on or whatever, but um, he's had that day off. So hopefully that will that will stand him in good stead. I mean, eight to one, I, I wouldn't be a player at eight to one, but you know, we don't need to be. We're on 28. So let's see how it goes. They're running scared of you, Sean. They're running scared of the game bet match podcast. Shevchenko now down to eight to one from 28 to one, a pre tournament, which we highlight here. He's the fourth favorite. The favorite, though, is Sebastian Corder at five dollars. Hasn't played yet. Uh, he's up against Sonego, which is a tricky little match. We're going to come on to that match in a minute. Yeah. Tommy Paul is the joint favourite at five to one. He's against Bolt, who um, was impressive yesterday. Jack Draper wasn't even in the betting uh, when we spoke about it because he was a qualified come through. Yeah, he so, was a so. late entrant, wasn't he? He was in qualies and then he got bumped into the main draw. He's up against Kekmanovic. He's plus five fifty. Chemchenko is eight dollars. Thompson ten to one. Jari ten to one. Kekmanovic ten to one. Arnaldi eleven. Dan Evans eleven. Sonego is. Four, uh, 12, sorry, and Leheka 12, Mazzetti 14. Um, it's wide open, isn't it? I mean, really, you can make a case for 10 of those players. Is anybody, you know, we're happy with our position at eight to one. Is anyone else that you thought, you know, he's looked quite good this week or anyone you've had a rebase on? Well, Draper's going to be dangerous. Mm. Feeling these conditions, you know, you do worry with, with Jack Draper about his fitness, his, his stamina over over the whole tournament. Um you know, he's going to be a, a big player, I think. Tommy Paul's, you know, got a tricky match against Bolt. That's not, you know, Bolt's pretty much fired up at the minute. That won't be won't be easy for Tommy Paul, I don't think. Um, Jordan Thompson's playing really well as well. You know, all the Australians, they, you know, they love this time of the year for obvious reasons. Dan Evans, as we've said. Bublik looked good as well. So that top half looks looks really, really tough. Um, I don't think I could pick a winner from the top half. Um, just looking at the list here, down the bottom half, I'm I'm still pretty happy with Shevchenko. If he's, if he's still fit, which, which I obviously hope he is. Um, he certainly can beat O'Connell. Uh, he's beaten Corder before, as I mentioned at, in the show the other day. That's that's if Corder even makes it past the Nago. And Leheka looked good as well in his in his opening round. Didn't have much of a much of a match to be honest. That uh, Lyovich will put up a bit more opposition. Um, so yeah, it's 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 very much wide open as you said. And any one of ten or twelve could win this. When you head to the Betro's website. You can see the latest outright prices in Adelaide. The tournament gets back underway about 6.30 this evening on Tuesday. So the prices are available on the outright and these matches till about 6.30 p.m. Uh, check the Beverage website for the times of the matches. I'll give you the times of the matches we want to speak about. And the first match we want to talk about, we mentioned me, it's a tournament favourite, Sebastian Corder, but always a fave for me. I, I'm still not convinced. We've spoken to him in, in depth many times on this podcast. And he's a very, very heavy favourite, actually, against Lorenzo Sonego. Minus 155 for Sebastian Corder, the number uh, two seed. No, he's not number two. Number three seed, the tournament favourite. Plus 125 for the Italian Sonego. The spread here is one and a half. Uh, Corder giving up one and a half is minus 121. Uh, Sonego receiving one and a half plus uh, minus 106. And the total very high, 23 and a half. Surprisingly high, really, because they played four times before and never has it cashed over 23 and a half. And in those four times before... It's the Italian, the underdog, Sonego, who leads three sets, uh, three sets, three wins to one. And he did mm. win the last match uh, in the quarterfinal in Mets in 2022. He won 6 4, six, four. So there are a couple of little misleading prices for me here, Sean. I think the total games at 23 and a half, I just don't see the logic in that when mm. you look at the head to head. And I think it's very, very high. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm convinced by that. And I'm certainly not convinced by Sebastian Corder at minus 155, given how many times. He lets favourite betters down with his lack of concentration. Is in, in, we never know which quarter's going to turn up to the court. Yeah, like last week, lost to Hanfman in straight sets, didn't he? Uh, the head to head is poor for him. Lorenzo Sonego leads it 105.5 to 94.5 in terms of service points won and return points won totals. As he said, Sonego's won all three meetings on hard courts. The one that quarter won was on clay, which I think it was, was in Italy, wasn't it? I think it was in, in Italy that he won yes, that. Yes, it was on clay. in Parma. Um, 2021. So Seneca's had one long match already here, or ironically against Hanfman. Um, the worry is fitness. In three hours he played against Yannick Hanfman. He said he was already tired and it's only the first tournament. So long match, three hours. That's the only thing that would put me off really back in Senego here because, and, and it does slightly put me off, but 2.25, is he plus 125? Yeah. Bet Rivers. I, I don't see how he can back Corder given their head-to-head, -head, given the fact that he is very, very hit and miss, very in and out, um, lost a poor one last week, has got very poor, as I just highlighted with those numbers, head-to-head uh, -head against this particular opponent. It's it's a lean for me, but Sonego, if I was betting in this match, Sonego would, ha would have to be the play. 
Yeah, Sonego plus 125. Corder has lost his last four matches on the tour. Um, so that match starts at 8.50 p.m. And you can there is 29 different markets available on the Bet Rivers website. If you head across now and you have a bet on the match, you'll be able to live stream it on whichever one of your computer, tablets, uh, or mobile phone device you wish to use. So uh, uh, a favour that's vulnerable here. Minus 155, Sebastian Corder. So not an official pick from Sean, just the lean. But Sonego, plus 125. I think probably best to watch the match, see how he goes in the first set, Sean, and see if he's not sort of flagging a little bit and just getting a bit exhausted. But if he can sort of keep his uh, keep his fitness going, and he's definitely going to give Sebastian Corder on big points. You know, Corder is not someone you want to trust, is it? Maybe the first set to Sonego. He's the one that's got the, you know, the match time under his belt. Corder obviously hasn't. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, there are some sort of, uh, if you go to the Betrivers website, onto the, uh, sorry, onto the Because We Win. Let me start again. Actually, if you go to the YouTube channel, which is the Betting Weekly Studios YouTube channel, there are some uh, sort of guides to better, better betting on tennis. And there's a couple of things there to do. If you, you have a big win, you will automatically be a fade. Some key points in tennis as well. So if you want to do some in play betting, uh, head across to the YouTube channel and watch some of those tutorial videos that are available on there, which I filmed when I was in Las Vegas. Uh, anyway, uh, let's move on to the next match. And it's a very, very evenly match, match, which match, match. Is that right? Uh, close game. Could be evenly <laughs> uh, matched. Yeah. Closely it, it, matched. It, it, it match, match. Did you say yeah. match, match? Anyway, it's uh, Matteo Analdi, another Italian up against Nicholas Jarry. Uh, Jarry is minus 114 here. Arnaldi is minus 108. So it's as close as pick as you can possibly be. One and a half is the spread if you want to play the spread, but really it's more liquidity or more stable on the money line. And the total games again here is 23 and a half. And then we've spoken about Jarry matches before that a lot of people like to bet Jarry matches on the overs. And uh, his last match in United Cup went over. Uh, Arnaldi is a player that I would probably say is better in slower conditions. Arnaldi... Um, is it more of a clay court player? Both of them will start the year pretty well. Um, both of them are expected to have good seasons. And um, Bet Rivers can't split them. Can you split them? Uh, no, but right. I don't think I can. If, if I had to go on the money line, I'd probably go with Arnaldi at, at the odds. Uh, looks set to be a, a very, very close match, doesn't it? On, they played in Beijing quite recently. Um, that's their only meeting. On Aldi had three match points to win it that day. Seven, six, seven, five. He would have won it if he had taken any of those three match points. Ended up losing it in a deciding set. There was only seven points in it over three hours in Beijing. And the stats were, were very similar. I think On Aldi won 1% more of his second serve points. Jerry, I think, won 3% more of his first serve points. So it's a lot will depend on the Jerry serve. He's, he's coming into this match pretty cold, Jerry. He had two kind of laboured wins over much lower ranked opponents in the United Cup uh, a week or so ago. Not impressive performances at all. I think he had to go to 7-5 in the in the third against um, one of the Greek guys who's ranked in the three or four hundreds. Um, so he certainly hasn't hit the ground running as far as 2024 is concerned. Arnaldi's played four main level matches already this season. Uh, they're all pretty long ones last week as well, weren't they? In um, I think it was in Brisbane, wasn't it? He was playing... So you would certainly argue that Arnaldi is the player who's likely to be in, in the better form right now. And he's certainly, you know, he's, he's a bit hotter. You know, Jerry's coming into this quite cold. The over games line, it is quite high at 23 and a half, but I'm still quite tempted to play it because I, I, I don't see any of these sets being quick ones. Mm. It's, it's unlikely to be like a 6-3, 6-2, something like that. I, I just don't see that happening with the way these two play. Do we know how Jerry plays? Big serve doesn't break serve anywhere near often enough, certainly on, on quickish hard courts. So I'm still tempted to play the overs here around about 1.93. That's minus 108 chance with Bet Rivers. Or if you want to take a slightly bigger um, punt on this one, the over two and a half sets, that's a bigger price, obviously, plus 120, 2.2 with Bet Rivers. I think that's kind of where I'd be looking at this. I know it's a high line, but I'm still, I'd much rather play over 23 and a half in this than, than Sonego. Yeah. I mean, we've mentioned many times Jerry matches and how the line is pitched very high on these his total games. Um, but the last time they met was thirty five games uh, in this match, and like you said, it was hardly yeah, almost three between, hours. Yeah, yeah, and hardly anything between the two of them. Uh, we highlighted this in the in the show on Sunday when the line of twenty three and a half comes on. We always automatically look for other markets. I know Sean goes to tie breaks. Yeah, tie breaks is something. Eight, I think in this, well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, the, yeah. the tie break here is minus one twenty four. We spoke about games yesterday, the matches yesterday, where it was or, or Sunday, sorry, where there were twenty three and a half as the total, and you could get pl sort of plus one twenty. 
So they haven't really moved the line because they don't want to move the line to 24 and a half because the 24 and a half line makes a big difference. And if you did want to pay the over 24 and a half, it's only minus 105. So you can go on the BetRivers website, move it up, and you can get different lines and different prices for total games markets. But 23 and a half at minus 108, however high it may seem, it might not be seemed high enough in a match between Jarry and Al Naudi, especially when Jarry matches, you pretty much want to bet them blind on the over. So um, is that an official pick or another lean? That's just a lean, that one, yeah. Another lean. So there are two matches in Adelaide. So no official pick for us uh, today. And that Al Naudi Jarry match starts at 7.30. So no official pick for us today in Adelaide. But um, we have something in Auckland, which we're going to come on to in a minute, the other tournament. Now, the Adelaide tournament is an ATP Tour 500 event. This is an ATP Tour 250 event in Auckland. Um, and here... They're both 250s. Uh, it's the, it's I thought the, Adelaide was a 500. For oh, the women, for the oh, women, sorry, for the men. Sorry, that's what it was. I've got my yeah. notes from uh, Rory yesterday. My mistake. Yeah, for the women, it's a it's a five hundred. So the women get the more money again. What's going on? Well, it's a, it's, a, it's a supposedly a better tournament for the women. I don't. I haven't looked at who's in the field to be honest at the WTA event, but I'm guessing it's got more top ten players yeah, it, than, it, than it has to. It has to be fair. Uh, okay, let's move across to the ASB uh, Classic in Auckland. Um, what have you seen here? Anything? Conditions here, they, they, they were, you said they were going to be slow. The weather forecast was very different for Adelaide. Is it pretty much as you expect? I didn't say it was slow, going to be slow. I, I said it's kind of medium paced surface averages. I think 82% holes. So it's just slightly less than um, than Adelaide. I think a lot of that is to do with the weather. You know, it's, it often can be, you know, not brilliant in, in New Zealand, in Auckland. But this week it's it's been quite sunny. I think it's going to be 25C again on Wednesday's play. And, and I'll come on to this in a minute, but uh, Max Purcell was saying about um, how the heat is getting onto the court here, whereas in Brisbane it wasn't. I assume he was talking about the roof. Um, so with the sun, the sunnier weather in Auckland this year, it is a little bit quicker by the looks of things, or in, in Purcell's opinion, um, than in previous times. I was getting confused again with the WCA show yesterday. <laughs> I was getting confused again. I was the Hobart tournament was the one that was the conditions were really stuck. I feel like I'm all over the place filming so I've never the, the, the men have never played in Hobart, so I don't know. I know, about but that, that's what I, I've written the notes down here, thinking one was slower than the other one. And it was actually this conversation I had with Rory. I've got confused from our conversation yesterday to Sunday, so I apologise for anybody who I misled there. But anyway, we've corrected that one straight away. Uh, let's have a look at the outright market. We have a new favourite in the tournament. Cam Norrie is the favourite. Um, he plays Van Ash in round two. I don't, I don't understand why he's suddenly gone favourite. He hasn't done anything and. I wouldn't bet him. He's plus four dollars. Ben Shelton is plus four fifty. Bit of an I'm uneasy. Not sure either. Yeah. Um, Artur Fields is now plus four fifty. I mean, I know he's a talent, but yeah, is he is he worth it? I mean, he has won a tournament before, a major before. Uh, Felix Auger had to see him on the comeback trail six dollars. Often an impressive week in week out eight dollars. Mm. Van der Sandtrip eight dollars. Seren Dool eleven dollars. Marazan fourteen. Uh, Luke Van Asch, uh, Luca Van Asch sixteen. Altmaier pulled, produced a big shot today, twenty to one. Uh, it's on the Muller 20 to 1, Tara Daniel 22, and Max Purcell 25 against Tabulo at 22. Now, unfortunately, our picks here uh, have bitten the dust. Our pick here bit the dust. Gail Monfils um, should have won the match, really. It, yeah. it, was, it was showboating, wasn't it? How Monfils was that? Ahead right. in the first set, ended up losing it. Had to save a couple of match points to get to a third. Served for the match. Yep. Didn't. I mean, that was classic Monfils, wasn't it? I was hoping he was going to go on the right side of that one, but never mind. It was uh, was 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 a very disappointing performance from Gail Monfils, but he's uh, he's out, I'm afraid. Uh, so we mentioned that second quarter, and that second quarter does look exceptionally weak. It's got Danielle Purcell, it's got Muller and Serendulu. One of them is going to be into the semi-finals. Is there anything that you you might look at now on the outright market, think you know protect that could be a little bit of value, or, or are we going to swerve and just say, okay, we've lost our money this tournament, let's move on. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't like adding players after one's gone out, to be honest. You, end, you know, if it doesn't go your way, you end up losing double than you were going to do originally. And there's still quite a lot of players in with chances. I did mention in the show that Purcell was perhaps the long shot to be on in, in that quarter. And, you know, I still think that. Well, that's quite a bold statement because the match we're going to talk about first is the Danielle against Purcell match. And Purcell has, has been a subject of a big betting move. Over the last couple of hours, he's now down to minus 132 with Bet Rivers, plus 107 for Daniel. The spread is one and a half. Uh, Purcell minus one and a half is minus 106. Daniel receiving one and a half is minus 121. The total 22 and a half, 29 different markets available on the Bet Rivers site. And if you have, do have a bet, remember you can live stream the match. But if you look at the head to head here, it's going to be a 
a tough ass for Purcell. I know he's Australian in Australia. In Australia. Well, he's not an Australian, he's in New Zealand, but he's in his part of the land. Um, but he, he's never won a set, never come close to taking a set of Daniel. Daniel beat him 6 2 6 2 the last time they played in Miami in 2022. Um, but you like the Aussie here. Uh, give me the reasons why, Sean. Yeah, I took him at 1.95 earlier on with Bet Rivers. That was, you know, it was a cracking price, minus 105. That is an American. Um, I'm not surprised to see that, that price has come in, but I just think that was wrong, the odds. I think it's being priced on that head to head, which is always a, a very sketchy thing for, for the layers to do. I mean, if we look at those two matches, one of them was a retirement anyway, so we can pretty much strike a line through that. The other one was when it was it was in it was in Miami, but it was when Miami was slower. It's only in the last sort of one edition really of Miami that it's become quicker. Before that it was it was pretty slow for a for a hardcore. So not a massive surprise that Daniel won in those conditions. And and also Purcell was ranked number 163 and number 210 in the world at the time of those two matches. You know, things are are very, very different now. Uh, if we look at the last 12 months on outdoor hard at main level, compare these two guys. Daniel Service points one, return points one, total of 98. Purcell, 101. So three points better off, which is fairly significant, I would suggest. Service hold and break totals, even more of a an advantage to, to Max Purcell, 102 to Daniel's 96. So statistics of, of recent times, over the last 12 months anyway, at main level, they certainly suggest that Purcell should be a, a decent favourite to win this, which he now is. Um, as I said before, Purcell was... Very impressed and and liked the conditions in his opening match, which was against the the home uh, wild card, the, the the guy from New Zealand, Panu, which he won in straight sets. And he was saying you can serve really big in these conditions because the heat is getting onto the court and making it quicker than it perhaps it has been before. So that all those things combined, I mean, and, and Daniel's done very very little recently. He struggled past a very out of sorts Alexander Vukic in the first round in a match that Daniel just won one more point, but he ended up nicking it seven five seven five. Um, yeah, not wildly impressed by that performance. Daniel's done nothing in recent times that suggests he should be favourite for this on, on this surface in these conditions. So I was more than happy to take one point nine five. That was that was an excellent price. Now it's it's a bit more of a mediocre price, but I'm still back in Purcell. So he's actually moved even more while we've been speaking. He's he was minus one thirty two, and I'm looking on the Bet Rivers website. It's gone to minus one thirty nine. So this is quite a, a big gamble on Max Purcell. So the line has gone from literally minus 105 to minus 139 in the space of an hour. Maybe take him on the handicap, was he? Minus... Well, that's what I was going to say. I mean, it, we, anyone's watching his show now may have missed the early value, but the handicap or the spread is is you can get, you can bet Purcell minus one and a half at minus 110. Would you, would yeah. you, would you think I'd that would... I'd probably go with that then, yeah, because I, th I think he's going to win it. So he should be we... by one and a half games. Or would you, like, if you think he's going to win, two sets to love plus 250 or just stick with a... Personal. I'd probably take that handicap. I wouldn't necessarily assume that he's going to win it 2-0. Um, minus one and a half games, that's, you know, that's fine. I'd, I'll go with that, which is the price has contracted so much. Yeah, it's it's moving all the time. It's now minus 139. That is a big move, minus 105 to minus 139. It, I mean, it looked a wrong price. That I looked at that and I just thought, really? 1.95 1. and Daniel is favourite. It didn't, you know yourself, when you look at a price and you just think, that's, that's not right. And then sometimes when you look into it a bit more, you think, oh, okay. You look at some of the stats and you think, well, there is a sort of a reason for that. But I'm, this looks to me like it's just been priced on the head-to-head, -head, which is strange. Well, there is a that, that is the point. I was just going to mention about the head-to-head. -head. How 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 much of a factor do you give to the head-to-heads in these in these sort of things? It, 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 it depends on number of factors, really. I mean, if it's if it's quite recent, um, it, then it's perhaps more relevant. But the, you know, this was years ago, and one of them was a retirement anyway, and the other one was played on a, a slow court where Purcell is never. Is never at its best. So they've obviously overlooked that or there's some other reason that I can't think of. Um, sometimes head-to-heads aren't that relevant. Sometimes they are. Yeah, this one I don't think is that relevant. Okay. No relevance to their heads Huge gamble on Max Purcell. We may have missed, well, we have missed the boat. If you want to play minus 139, we would probably recommend a little bit of caution to it, but minus one and a half on the, t on the game handicap or the spread is probably where the best value lies now on minus 110. For Purcell, but we think first we'll go through huge, huge gamble over the last couple of hours. Um, anyway, let's move on to the second match we want to talk about, and this is uh, a man who produced a shock today. Altmaier plus two hundred five up against Felix Auger Anderson. I think it's a big, big season for Felix Auger Anderson. This one, he's got to really bounce back and try to back, back to the top echelons of the game. People have 
sort of look at him as a, a major champion last year and the year before, but it hasn't happened for him. And he's dropped down the rankings. It's a real big season for him. He's a heavy favorite against Altmaier. He's minus 265. Altmaier is plus 205. A win today against Giron. Shock win. The spread is three and a half. Auger Lassim giving up three and a half plus 108. Altmaier receiving three and a half minus 139. The total here is 22 and a half. The two have never met before. This is Auger Aliassim's first match of the season. Last match, last time he played was in Paris, where he got beat by Sitsipas, but he did win the tournament in Basel uh, before that. Where he beat Herkash, Rune, Chevchenko, Van der Sandship. So he sort of ended the season on a on a bit of a high. Um, I like Felix Auger I like I do like him. I think he's uh, he's uh, he's I like the player. I think he's got a lot of talent, but he just seems to be lost at the moment. Um, what do you think of this one? Sun's come out now. I can't I can't see a thing. It's <laughs> You it's just said you're of, happy with the sun coming out. I am, but it's kind of it's deflecting off the neighbor's upstairs window directly into my face. It's here, the so. trouble with our bald heads, Sean. It deflects, <laughs> it deflects straight off into the neighbor's. I've got it coming in my side. It's coming from your side See, to mine. Sun's always shining on the righteous again, isn't it? Yeah, um, right, where are we? Felix Altmaier, yes. Um, <sighs> knee injury so far this year for Felix. He hasn't really played a match. Coming in cold. I'm never, I'm never happy about Felix. Early anyway, Texas, he's often a very, very slow starter in tournaments. If you look at his record in his first main level match of the year, um, the six times he's he's done it at main level, he's he's only won one. So he's won five win loss in his opening main level match of the year. The only win came over Yuichi Sagita, who at the time was 104 in the world. So opening matches of the year for Felix have not gone well. Uh, and now he's had a knee injury, which kept him out of, I think he was going to play in the United Cup, wasn't he? But he didn't play in that because this knee injury um all my stats on outdoor hard are actually surprisingly better than i thought when i looked at his stats the other day well i'll, I'll caveat that i looked at all my stats away from clay and that includes grass indoor hard outdoor hard and they, they were particularly poor on outdoor hard alone after that win over that surprising win over gear i don't think many people would have would have picked that He's 7 11 win loss in the last 12 months on outdoor hard at main level and his service points won return points won total is 98 which is pretty respectable and a lot better than than I thought it was. Um, Felix is obviously better, but he didn't have a great season by any means last year. He's only 13 and 12 win loss, and his total is 101. So he's slightly better than Altmaier. Well, a, a decent amount better than Altmaier, but the caveat is that, he, is he fit? He certainly isn't match fit. We, we know that. Um, Altmaier's had a couple of matches under his belt. I just feel like he, he might keep this close for a while, Altmaier. Felix only breaks surf 15% of the time on this surface. Um, so it's it, it feels like to me it could be one where Felix will win, but it might take him a while to hit his hit his straps and fully get into his stride. So set one over 10 and a half. When I looked at that earlier with Bet Rivers, it was uh, 2.9 plus 190. That's that's where I'd be looking at in this match. That's always a good strategy with Felix or Jadisine match as well to go over the Set one game. He's always, he plays a lot of tie breaks, isn't he? Plus one eighty five. Yeah, is the price strong for serve over ten and a half. Yes, yeah, similar. Yeah, slightly, slightly less than I said. Yeah, so he you know holds serve a lot, doesn't break enough. You know, it does tend to lead you down that path of of set one overs or or tie breaks. Now that match is the first match on court, six p.m. Eastern time this evening. Felix Orge, Aliasim, Daniel Altmaier, Tara Daniel, and Max Purcell. I didn't give you the time. That starts at seven twenty. Eastern time. So it gives you plenty of time to head across to the Bet Rivers website and place your wages on those matches. And we is that an official pick we're going for there? The Orge Ellison game? The, the, we... Again, this is just the Leon. I'm only having the Purcell bet. So just the Purcell bet. So with, do, for the purposes of the, the show now with the line, the Purcell bet is going to be, is it going to be the handicap or is it going to be the money line? We'll have to take that handicap, the minus one and a half yep. games. M minus one and a half games at uh, minus 110 is the official pick. Okay, the final match, which is also an early start. It's 6 p.m. Uh, this evening. Francisco Serendulo minus 148 against Alexander Muller at plus 120. These two players have got a great chance here of going deep into a tournament in that very weak second quarter. Uh, I mean, it's really up for anyone in that section could could go through here. But Serendulo Muller, Serendulo is a number three seed. And, uh, you know, he, he was fancy his chance of going through, but he hasn't had a good start to the year. He got beat by Batista. A good ended last season with a loss against Herkash. Uh, Muller, on the other hand, has done well. He's come through two matches in qualifying here, and he won in the first round against Bonzi. Um, an overwhelming favourite, Serendulu. Um, I, I just well, I don't know what the conditions are going to be like. I, don't know, I can never really trust Serendulu. I know he likes it a little bit more quicker, but the spread is one and a half, and the total is 22 and a half with over... 
the underdog at minus 107 and under the favourite at minus 120. Um, how do you see this one goes? So this is a tricky little match, I think. Yeah. What, what odds is Serendola now in, in decimal? Minus 148. So around about 150 in decimal. Okay, that's shorter than he was when I first looked at this then because he was about 1.7 something when I when I first looked at this match. And I thought that's that's pretty big. And then I looked into the stats and, you know, the last 12 months and outdoor hard at main level, they both got exactly the same service points re- one and return points. One total, Serendolo 99, Muller 99. So on that, you know, 1.5, or if that's what you're saying he is, that's that's quite short then in that case. Um, Serendolo is now, be- now being coached by Franco Davin, who's... Um, a very, very experienced coach, coach a lot of top players. Sorry, I made a mistake there. It's not 1.5, it's it's four to six. So that's what's that in the decimal. So that is that is one sixty-six. Sorry. Yeah, it's closer to one point seven. Yeah, that, that that makes sense. Yeah. Um now being coached by Franco Davin, who's coached a lot of top guys, Fognini and, and Dimitrov, Del Potro. Um, now working with Serendolo. He's he's been talking, you know, pretty confidently. He's talking about getting into the top ten this season, Serendolo. Maybe a little bit ambitious, some people might think, but if he is going to get into the top 10, he certainly should be winning matches like this against Muller, who tends to be slightly more effective on clay. Um, as I said, the service points, one of return points, one turtle's a dead level for the last 12 months, but there's some significant advantage for Serendolo on the service hold and break turtles. He's on 101, Muller's down at 93. So on the latter stats, you would think Serendolo's a, a pretty reasonable favourite at, at, at those odds, but the other stats kind of put me off a little bit and the other thing is Serendolo's only won five of his 24 hard court matches that he played in 2023 in straight sets so the others he either lost or he won them in a in a decider so given also the fact that he did look a bit rusty in that opening match against Bautista and Gut, I think I'd be looking at a big one here. I'm slightly tempted with the Serendolo to win this 2-1 he was around about 4.1 plus 310 chance with Bet Rivers when I looked at this earlier for that uh, set score I'll get you the price currently now. Two one to Serendulo is, I think it's plus two ninety five. Okay, so slightly less. Yeah, plus two ninety five. That's something to think about if you want a big price punt on this match. Then um, I would suggest that's probably the best one. So a marginal win for Serendulo. Go two sets to one. One official play in Auckland, and it's Purcell. Now we was going to play him on the money line, but the line has moved quite significantly over the last couple of hours, and it's we're going to play the play, is Purcell minus one and a half games at minus 110. It's the only pick from Sean, who was only one pick yesterday. A lot of injuries from our picks, wasn't it? We had a lot of players we've drawn, a lot of players with just the one pick on the matches that, that, that cash was yeah, in. Yeah, was out, wasn't he? And there was, I mean, this draw has got so much pen on it from the, the one the players that have, have pulled out and the players that have come in. It's just, it just doesn't look anything like it did when I first printed it out. So, yeah, Nishioka pulled out as well didn't he um so yeah it's uh, it's um yeah crazy isn't it first week of the season and everyone pulling out yeah, yeah. i mean we, we don't, this is the problem with betting in the first week we don't know how fit these guys are you know they might have ended last season on a high or or, or whatever but it, it doesn't mean it's like two months or six seven eight weeks later you know what's happened to them physically they could have had a an injury during the training block or they just come back and the you know they're not mm-hmm. quite right so that makes it tricky uh, in the first the first uh, week or two of the season. Now, I hope you've enjoyed the first week here, uh, previewing these tournaments in Auckland and Adelaide. Uh, hope you're cashing some tickets as well. And please remember to follow us uh, because we win on our Twitter account and our Instagram account. Uh, you can subscribe to the Bet Weekly uh, Betting Weekly Studios on YouTube. That's our YouTube channel. And there's been some really good comments. We've had lots of comments in the, in the two shows we've done this week, myself and Rory, and also myself and Sean. So any questions you want there, any questions, keep it going. Keep that vibe going. We want everyone to have a question. We want some opinion. We want you. If you don't agree with the picks, give us the reasons why you think you, you, you should you should be, we should bet on what you're saying. And you don't agree with us, let us know. And you can also download the podcast, uh, Betting Weekly because we win, uh, which is available on your preferred podcast provider. Um, just remember, Sean's pick is 7.20 this evening. The action starts at 6 o'clock Eastern time in Auckland and 7, 6.30, I think, in Adelaide. So you've got a few hours to head across and get your wages in. Uh, Sean, thank you very much. Enjoy thank the company you. as always. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow, previewing some more matches here in the build-up to the Australian Open. The Australian Open draws on Thursday, is that correct, Sean? Is it Thursday? Is it Thursday? Or? I think it's Thursday or Friday, yeah, and we'll be looking at the outright. I thought it was Friday, but it could be. It could be even earlier. Thursday. I, I think I get a bit confused with the times. 
but uh, you know, yeah, it's because they're so far ahead, isn't it? Yeah, I, I twelve hours it. ahead, so yeah. So we will we when it when the draw is made, we're the first place to come here. The preview on the outright market, as well as on the men's draw, as well as the women's with the Roy Girani on the betting weekly WTA show as well. Anyway, enjoy your evening. Cash some more tickets. Hope Sean doesn't have to spend any more money at the dentist. Hopefully, he's he, he's, he comes back in a, this kind of mood tomorrow, happy, sun shining. But twenty four hours is a long time in betting. It's even longer in the Sean Calvert's world. Anyway, uh, take care and we'll speak to you all later.